Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's Ash Hilton. I'm a doctor, a dentist, and I'm a medical school admissions tutor in the UK. What I'm about to show you is one of the lessons from my course on how to get into UK medical school. Uh, if you want to see any more of the resources that we talk about or download the PDFs, just head to futuredoc.co. And if you want any more lessons or the full course, you can see all that there too. And that said, enjoy. <laughs> As we discussed, gaining work experience in a healthcare setting is crucial for your success. In this lesson, I will walk you through my tips on getting the most out of work experience. And at the end, I will teach you my seven step plan for how to gain hospital work experience in the UK. It's good to have a two week Monday to Friday, nine to five intensive period of shadowing somebody in the UK. This could be a period of shadowing a consultant in a hospital or being in a GP surgery, but it should be balanced with a regular long-term commitment, such as a weekly commitment in a place local to you. It is usually good to get experience in the everyday, less glamorous side of medicine, like volunteering or paid work in a nursing home. I, for example, used to have a paid job working after school, giving out the evening meals to patients at my local hospital. Not all of your work experience has to be in the UK, but I would definitely recommend doing at least one placement in our UK National Health Service. It would probably work best to do a one to two week placement here, then go back and do a regular weekly job at your local hospital at home. University selectors understand that it can be difficult to arrange work experience in a clinical setting, but will expect you to have found at least something that shows commitment to helping people. Volunteering at a local charity shows just as much bravery and willingness to help. Make sure you look into each charity and choose a course that you can feel passionate about to give some purpose to your work experience, rather than just doing it as a tick box exercise. Ask your local authority on where's a good place that you could help out and volunteer. And most of all, make sure you get references for any volunteer work that you complete. Hospices are places where patients who are nearing the end of their life go to receive care. This can be quite difficult, but a skill that doctors must develop to survive for a career in medicine. Hospices are particularly grateful for the help of a keen, young, enthusiastic and helpful person. So it can be very good places to try. Remember, this is also proving that you have the guts to endure some of the rather unpleasant or sad situations that occur in medical practice. Selectors will be looking for your evidence of this in personal statement and interview. It will also lead to opportunities that will offer further experiences that you can then add to enhance your personal statement. Be creative with your work experience. Imagine that you're a 40 to 50 year old doctor reading through dozens and dozens of personal statements. What do you think will stand out? A young student who is willing to go to a homeless shelter or volunteer at an orphan camp abroad shows a lot more character when compared to someone who's just arranged an easy placement with their local doctor who's a family friend. It is important to show that you organized your own placement. Do not say that your parent organized it for you. An important skill for doctors to have is their ability to take their own initiative, which will be demonstrated if you chose your own placement. How is working in a healthcare setting beneficial to you? The reflection is the most important part of the process. What you can take away and learn from the experience is infinitely more important than what you actually did. Can you show from these experiences that you have learned what medicine is all about and that you know that you can handle it? The more evidence that you can get to prove that you did these things, the better. Any experience or volunteering that you do, Try to get them to write a letter of recommendation and make sure that you refer to it when writing your personal statement. It is absolutely vital that you keep a detailed diary of not just what you saw, but what you learned from it. It may be a long time between the work you do and when you sit down to write your personal statement. People tend to forget a lot more than they think. So make sure you reread your diary a few days before your interview and when writing your personal statement to check the facts. You will be 100% grateful that you did this. When you write your personal statement, write it in a way that may provoke the interviewer to ask some questions about what you did. All the time whilst doing these placements, you should be asking yourself, is medicine really the career for me? And if the answer is yes, note down any reasons why this confirms your choice. You also need to show that it has proven and given you the determination that you need to succeed. It is really important at the end of your work experience to ask the consultant to write you a letter of recommendation and send it to your school after it has finished. 
You can then show this or mention it in your application or ask the school to mention it in their reference. Application date fast approaching and you still haven't done any work experience? Don't worry. Although it's best to have some work experience beforehand so that you can write about it in your statement, you can still say that you have some arranged in the future and you're very much looking forward to it, as well as some of the skills that you think you might learn from engaging in the work experience. If you're struggling to get work experience, there are courses out there that are designed to give you some of the exposure and help you understand some of the basics of medicine. I've provided you with a printout below that links to some of these resources. When you ask selectors what they want to see from a student, it is normally that they have the determination to succeed and that they have done everything they can do to research the career so that they are going into the application fully aware of what being a doctor is like. Your work experience should confirm that you want to do the job. They are very good at telling the difference between what is genuine and what is not. They read hundreds and hundreds of applications, so keep them interesting but make it personal to you. When on work experience, I really want you to keep a diary. The things that are really important to write about and look out for when you're on your, on your placement are examples of teamwork, the multidisciplinary team, which we'll talk about later, communication skills, empathy shown by the doctor, and the realities of being a doctor, which are usually seen in some difficult experiences. Now, here's my seven step process for obtaining experience in the UK. Firstly, decide on a specialty that you think you may like. Let's say, for example, that you choose general surgery. Then you have to decide on a hospital that you would like to do the work experience in. Maybe you want to see what London is like, and actually you really like paediatrics. So you do some online research and you find out that Great Ormond Street Hospital is one of the leading centres in the world of paediatrics. Three, call the hospital main switchboard. You can find this number on Google just by Googling the hospital. And then ask to speak to the secretaries for that particular specialty. In this example, you would say, Hello, please may I speak with the paediatric general surgery secretaries. If you are not confident speaking English, you can either search for their emails or ask the switchboard two to three email addresses for the specialty that you have chosen. We have attached a template below which gives you a rough idea of what to say in an email when sending it to a secretary. Note that people tend to have better success on the phone, so if you can do that, it's best to practice that way. Remember that it's fine to try multiple specialties, as some people will reply to you and some people will just be too busy. Some departments are easier to contact than others, and some are just generally more or less helpful. Having different experiences can be beneficial. For example, having one placement in a hospital and another in a general practice will give you great variety and insight into the world of medicine. Arrange the placement at your convenience. Make sure the consultant who you're shadowing isn't on holiday or away on a conference at the time that you plan to visit. Whilst on your placement, talk to everybody, patients, nurses, junior doctors. I want you to really get an understanding of what it's like to live a day in their lives in the healthcare service. Keep notes on all of these things. Make a daily placement diary, how you felt, what you learned about the job, and what you learned about yourself. This will all be crucial for when, for when writing your personal statement and at interview. Well done on making it this far through the lesson. I hope you can see why this is such an important part of the medical application process. I hope that now you have the confidence to go away and gain some work experience of your own. Remember that there are hundreds and hundreds of hospital departments, so don't worry if the first few aren't successful. Just keep going and going until you get the result that you want. Remember, you can do your work experience in both the UK and at home, but try to at least have one week of experience in the UK's National Health Service. Try this out and let me know how it goes in the next lesson. See you there. Thanks for watching my video. If you want to see more or see the full course or any of the resources or PDFs that we allude to in the video, just pop to futuredoc.co and check it out. Thanks.